Hi, this is Dave Iker at NIAC, and I'm here with Chris Goh, who this morning gave us a fantastic two-part explanation of high-resolution planetary imaging techniques, and I've asked Chris to say a little bit about how he got interested in imaging the sky. Chris, take it away. I started imaging in 2003 during the Great Mars Opposition. During that time, I, was, I started using a C8 and a Philips 2U cam, which is a, you know, the, a webcam a cheap webcam uh, you can buy off from the supermarket. Um, things got, uh, you know, as technology developed, I was able to use more sophisticated cameras and I concentrated mostly on Jupiter and Saturn. Things changed during February of uh, 2006 when uh, I discovered that uh, Jupiter's oval BA had turned red during that time. I got to collaborate with professional astronomers. That's when, you know, I, I started concentrating on studying Jupiter and Saturn. Of course, along the way, we got to use some more sophisticated instruments like the Hubble Space Telescope and the Keck and Gemini Observatories in uh, Mauna Kea. So it's, it's been a fun ride. Uh, as uh, we go along, we get, we get to use new technologies, new techniques, and uh, that's how we develop. It's also nice that uh, there are groups of amateur planetary imagers around help uh, us develop our skills. That must have been quite a tremendous thrill to use HST to be associated with that to study planets, Chris, huh? Yeah, it's been fun. Uh, I'm basically right now, I'm probably the amateur astronomer who has the most orbits of uh, Hubble. Uh, I have used Hubble for more than about 60 orbits. So it's, it's been a fun run. Well, that's really fantastic and you're quite an inspiration to other amateur astronomers here who are interested in imaging planets and are not quite up to the level of sophistication that you've gotten into and I know I saw probably the lion's share nearly all of the more than 250 people here were at your presentation this morning and taking very detailed notes uh, so you're really helping the world to learn how to take the best images of planets that amateur astronomers can take so thanks for all that you do. It's great that uh, amateurs can contribute because right now uh, a lot of professionals are asking for amateur images and uh, that's what we want now, uh, more amateurs contributing to science. It's amazing that of all branches of astronomy and planetary science that we contribute the most, where non-professional astronomers can become, uh, can help in developing our understanding with uh, other planets. Uh, professional astronomers don't have enough resource to go along and as I explained in my talk earlier when it comes to getting telescope time whether from Hubble or professional observatories planetary astronomy is basically on the lowest pecking order while in for amateur astronomers we can basically get almost nightly images and uh, in, in which case we can really help out professionals and I know that uh, the readers and the viewers on the website will continue to enjoy seeing lots of your great images in Astronomy Magazine and, and on the site in the future. And so thanks for making the magazine uh, to be all it can be as well, Chris. It's a pleasure to be working with you. Well, I love astronomy. I started astro uh, you know, this hobby with this magazine. It was in 1986 that uh, uh, you know, Hubble came and I got interested in astronomy, but I had nowhere to go. When I went to a supermarket, there was a copy of the August issue, 1986, of Astronomy Magazine. When I got that, things changed. That's when I started doing, uh, being an amateur astronomer, studying the stars, and eventually developing astrophotography and the planetary imaging. So I started everything because of Astronomy Magazine. Well, congratulations on everything that you've done and, and uh, a bright future ahead for all that you're doing. Thanks so much, Chris. Thank you.